G'day, I'm James, and each of my fabulous colleagues is currently choosing their mega fave number. Those are numbers over a million that they find particularly interesting, their favourite interesting number over one million. And then my colleagues asked me, James, what's your mega fave number? And I thought to myself for a moment, ooh, do I have one? Do I have a favourite number over a million? That's really curious. And then as I pondered upon this, my brain went to this strange logical spiral. How can I answer the question of my favourite interesting number over a million? And I thought this way, my brain went through a three-step process. Number one, my colleagues are choosing interesting numbers, so there must be a notion of some numbers being interesting out there, whatever interesting means. So some numbers are interesting. Step two, then my brain said if some numbers are interesting, then I guess we're classing some numbers as not interesting, the ones we're not interested in. Great, so there's two classes of numbers out there. So I thought to myself, okay, well let me just go through all the mega numbers, all the numbers bigger than a million, and see if they're interesting or not interesting. So I'll just start with the first one. Is a million and one interesting? Now, by pure logic, the answer is either yes or no. Two choices. It's interesting or it's not interesting. In fact, I can delete this choice by pure reasoning. Here goes. If a million and one is not interesting, then it will be the first mega number that's not interesting, which I find interesting. Contradiction. If it's not interesting, it's interesting. So this is a contradiction. The answer to this question can't be no. So by default, a million and one is interesting. And I don't know why. I don't know what makes it interesting, but it is. Therefore, I'm going to choose a million and one as my favorite, make my mega fave number. A number that's interesting for reasons I don't know why. It's interesting. There we are by pure logic. Wow. Actually, I think my cold, strange logic can go even further. I think I now prove that all numbers are interesting. In fact, let's look at the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, up to a million, and so on, and so on, and so on. There's a lot of them. They're going to split into two sets, the interesting ones and the non-interesting ones. But think about it. If they really do split into two sets like this, ask, what's the smallest number that lands up amongst the non-interesting ones? The smallest non-interesting number. So the something in here is going to be a smallest one, and it'll be the first non-interesting number, which would suddenly make it interesting. It doesn't belong in there. It belongs up there. But you can argue there is no smallest non-interesting number because it would make it interesting, interesting by default. And the only way out of this logical pickle is there's nothing in that set. That's the empty set, in which case all numbers are interesting. In particular, a million and one is interesting and that just jives my previous part of this video. Love it. A million and one is my mega fave number and I'm going to stick with it. Okay, now there's actually another way through this tornado of logic. It could be that the entire premise of the discussion is false. The very notion that interesting numbers exist in the first place could be wrong. In which case we're saying nothing is interesting, in which case everything we did previously is moot, irrelevant, doesn't apply, because nothing's interesting. Oh no, so now logically we're in two extremes, either nothing's interesting or Everything is interesting, and I don't know which anymore. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to stick with the number 1 million and 1, because I kind of like it now. It feels like a good friend. So my mega fave number is 1 million and 1, and even though logically right, right now, I'm not sure if it's interesting or not, but there we are. My mega fave number, I'm sticking with it for sure.